Welcome back to Civilian Tactical Science Lab Edition. I still don't have a white lab coat, but I brought you guys something very interesting. These are what's known as wax slugs. We're gonna show you how they're made, how damaging they really are, and if they're even accurate. And to show you how they're made, we're gonna go over to our table of science. Now, before I show you how these things are made, a big caveat, all the testing we're gonna do is theory. We don't know if they're gonna be accurate, we don't know if they're gonna be deadly, and we don't know if they're even going to cycle, but this is how you make them. First, you take a regular round of sealed top bird shot and you would slice off the top with a special tool or even a knife. This is our tech toe. Then once open, you can see the lead shot inside and you would pour this into some wax. This process is so simple. All you would do at this point is scoop up the lead shot and then pour it into the cup. Now in theory, this is gonna hold all the lead shot together so it flies downrange in a solid slug formation. But this is just wax, so I don't know that it's gonna hold all this shot together as it's flying at Mach lightning speed. We're gonna find out. So now that we know how these things are supposed to work in theory, it's time for our damage test. We've got two cinder blocks and for one we're gonna hit it with regular bird shot and for the other we'll hit it with the wax slug. First up we got our regular bird shot and auto loaded in there we do have that wax slug. Oh my goodness. All right, if we review the slow-mo, you can see that this first cinder block just got peppered and it left a trail of dust as that bird shot flew off. This guy got absolutely destroyed. The wax slug did concentrate enough energy in one place that we only have rubble left. Now all that energy is awesome, but it's for naught if we don't find out if it's deadly. So we got some ballistics gelatin and this is gonna be our final test together. But first we wanna figure out, is it accurate? And do those wax slugs actually hold together while flying through the air? Now for our accuracy test, the setup is simple. Two paper targets, and I should be the most excited about our lethality test, but I have to be honest with you guys, this is the one that I have been the most curious about because if these these things don't fly accurately, I don't know that I would want to use them, so we're going to pit them up against regular one ounce slugs. This is kind of, for me, going to be the deciding factor, are these worth using? First up, our three regular slugs out of our Beretta 1301. And next up, we've got our three cut shells. All right. So I was aiming dead center and we got all of our hits up here. I thought I only got one on paper and maybe I was a terrible shot, but we got one, two, and three. They really stacked on top of each other. So this makes me feel a lot better about my aim. Because even if we didn't hit dead center, this means that the red dot's just off and I can actually shoot. Even though sometimes my red dots like to gaslight me into thinking otherwise. And then after adjusting our point of impact, this is what we saw with the wax slugs and this is totally different. We do see random pellets that came off, but it's not like everything came apart into regular birdshot, and we got one, two, and three impacts. And because I know I could aim on the other target, these should have been close together, but since they don't have the rifled slug edges, they don't stabilize as nicely, and they don't have the nice boat tail design. So these are cheap, but you are gonna be compromising on accuracy. And we're noticing an interesting pattern. This guy tumbled while these two went in front end in. So maybe that's why the accuracy is suffering because they're not incredibly stable. And we are gonna get to testing the lethality of this in ballistics gelatin, but take everything I say with a grain or two, or three, of salt. I'm what we call a YouTube scientist. But now for the elephant in the room, wax slugs versus cut shells. A cut shell is when you cut the wad almost all the way around on your birdshot so that this top part with the birdshot goes flying down range impacting your target. We've tested these and they work, except they don't really cycle very well because you got a gimpy looking cartridge. However, if you manually load it right into the chamber, you don't really have too many issues. Whereas the wax slugs in theory will cycle better out of the shotgun, but I mean, we can also just put that to the test right now. Yeah. This is what you get from the cut shell. A nice old jam. So let's load up some more of these wax slugs for the cycling test. The main downside that I've heard you could run into with a wax slug is that the projectile is all kind of globbed up together, but it can slide out. So we're gonna see if that happens as we cycle these five or so rounds. Let's go for it. One, two, three, four, 
looks like we got four. And this is what I'm talking about. This is how I found that shell after it didn't fire. Looking at the back, we actually didn't get a primer strike at all. But if I just give this a little shake, the projectile falls out. And this is what can cause these not to cycle very nicely. This actually looks kind of cool. Let's give this one back to our professional reloader because we do not load these ourselves. So let's go ahead and load up three new rounds of this stuff to see if it gives us similar problems or if it fires just fine. Three, two, one. Uh, no issues there, but you know that there's always a chance if it happened once, it could happen again. And it's going to give you no issues whatsoever. It's just an extra step. Between cut shells and wax slugs, I have to give it to wax slugs. After all, you could put a light roll crimp on the top if you don't want that slug coming out. Now, before we do our ballistics gelatin test, let me introduce you to the Chinese helmet test. This is where we figure out if a wax slug would be effective against a Chinese, I think it's the PLA helmet, the People's Liberation Army, which it said it was like, a Korean helmet when I bought it, but from everything I can see, this is a People's Liberation Army Chinese helmet with that classic Chinese army man green. Regular birdshot versus PLA helmet. Now for the wax slug. Oh man. Whereas that birdshot just peppered this helmet, we hit this thing twice with wax slugs. Once right here, and it just bent it in like wild. And then take a look at this on the back side. It looks like it was hit by a cannonball. That is some wild damage, and it didn't punch through, but this would have hit your head pretty hard because of how much it's concaved in. And now for a lethality test, which I'm gonna set up. And as I do, take a listen to a word from our sponsor. First up, 945 Industries with their awesome off-body carry bag. This is a bag and a holster, and if you use code BAG10, you can get 10% off. I've been using this thing for over a year. Code BAG10 for 10% off at 945 Industries. And of course, for all of your ammunition needs, you're gonna want to check out Ammo Squared. When you need to stock up on ammunition, Ammo Squared has got your back and they'll automatically help you do that and make it simple and easy every single month. So check out Ammo Squared and tell them that I sent you. And now back to our testing. All right, that was awesome. Now we have our clear ballistics gelatin set up. Well, it was clear. Clear ballistics gelatin is actually gonna be sending me more because they were absolutely appalled at the state of my gelatin. So we're just gonna use this for now, especially since these wax slugs have orange wax inside of them, which is roughly the same color of my nasty gel. If I were to blast this into a nice new gel block, it would kind of ruin it and I wouldn't be able to remelt it again for you guys. So we're gonna use the nasty one for the nasty slugs. Wax slug into ballistics gelatin in three, two, one. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen ballistics gelatin regurgitate so much material right back at me. And I felt random splashes of stuff, but it wasn't moving very fast. But look at this. That cavitation expanded to almost double the size of the ballistics gelatin. And as a result, you can see a massive tear of tissue about six inches in. And if we get even closer, you can see these pellets that fragmented out in a radial pattern after impact. This is crazy. They penetrated about as deep as regular birdshot does, but all of that energy was focused onto one point. Oh yeah, and this confirms that you guys, that slug definitely hit in sideways because it has kind of that rectangular shape, which is definitely the cross section of the slug. And with that amount of hydrostatic shock, yeah, that would kill any medium sized game. And though there wasn't a ton of penetration, I have a feeling I wouldn't want to get hit with that in the chest either. So with the devastation of these wax slugs, they're accuracy and how much energy they transfer. I want to know, are you team cut shell or are you going to be more on the side of these wax slugs? I want to know your thoughts in the comment. Oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, I forgot those cut shells always jam up. Maybe if we do that. And so I want to know your thoughts. Are you team cut shell or are you team wax slug? Let me know in the comments down below.